talk to you for a second about meaningful work. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about the messages behind the art that we're putting into the world. And with that in mind, I've been seeking out puppetry artists who embody what I'm calling meaningful work. These are people who use puppetry in a way that has the power to change. One such artist is Glenn Marla. Glenn is a theater artist, writer, puppet maker, and art therapist. Their art contains themes of body liberation, gender, fat, and elements of psychology. I first encountered Glenn's work at a puppet theater festival in Brooklyn, where I was also performing. I remember seeing these giant, colorful puppets backstage, including this surreal-looking body part flower plant thing, and thinking, what is that? And then I saw the show, The Wild Unwanted. This almost spectral figure appears, looking kind of like a skeleton with hanging body parts. I was immediately drawn in. And then another figure saunters in, giant lips bouncing with her hips. There once was a young boy. <laughs> Narrating the story of this boy who seeks to be a thing of beauty despite countless messages to the contrary. So the boy kind of goes on an adventure and learns a number of lessons from different colorful characters. And by the end, the whole thing is just bursting with positivity and balloons. I remember feeling like I wanted so many people to see this show. I caught up with Glenn at their Brooklyn apartment where I was greeted by the cutest tiny dog named Lucille. Glenn has a workspace in their home where we sat down and talked about puppetry, art therapy, non-conforming identities, and of course, the wild unwanted. I feel like I've always been in love with puppets ever since I was very young. I even remember being a young person working on other people's shows. And whenever there was puppetry in the show, I was like so excited and I was like, and for so long, I was like, oh, I love puppetry so much. Like, I just get to be a fan, but it's not something that I do. And I kind of think that that message came to me kind of as like the leftover uh, acting school <laughs> mm. message because it was always communicated to me. Like, if you're going to be a really big, really queer person, the, the space you take up on stage, like everyone's put their eye right to you. Right. Mm. And that was always communicated to me ever since I was probably in high school by by directors and things like that. And so I thought, oh my God, well, the magic of puppetry is the person disappears. Mm -hmm. And I was taught that I and my body could never disappear. And so I guess I just like never gave myself the permission to do puppetry. Just as I was turning 30, I went to graduate school uh, to become an art therapist. And um, I don't know, I think I had like a transformation in that time where so much of my work as a younger performer and artist was about the power and magic and really vulnerability in in making my you know queer fat body vulnerable on stage and um i got to a place where i was like i think i need my body to be a little less vulnerable in my art and a little more magic and mm. to me that makes so much sense that then i led to puppetry, right? Because the puppets are relying on my body. I help create magic with my body. I'm not an art therapist who does theater, and I'm not a theater artist who does art therapy. Um, they both are rooted in the things that are most important to me in art. Um, accessibility, playfulness, imagination, uh, and the very strong feeling that the subconscious has something critically valuable to offer us. And those, all these things that I love uh, and contribute to what I want to put in the world and participate in in the world really live in both. I asked Glenn about this quote from their website that said, if you don't fit in anywhere, 
you can fit in everywhere. Fit in there. I mean, there's like a million ways like that I could feel like I don't fit in, right? Like physically, like I'm a large person. I actually literally don't fit everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then if, uh, I'm a gender non-conforming person and a trans person. So like not really working within the binary, right? So there's like all these levels, but even my artwork and my performance work as a younger person uh, was in burlesque shows downtown and in gallery spaces and integrated into collaborations with Justin Vivian Bond. And, and then I found myself just being like, oh my God, I get to perform at colleges and at PS122. And I just was like, oh, I think I've decided that uh, while I have not successfully fit neatly in any way that like, I think it's just a mindset that I get to fit in everywhere, you know, even though it's communicated to me and a variety of other people in this world that like, uh, we don't get to participate because of marginalized identities. Mm -hmm. um, there's a certain power in being like, um, I'm going to try and participate, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm going to uh, work within this. And then we talked about the wild and wanted. See it as like um, a queer resilience meets 70s animation special fairy tale, <laughs> if that's a genre. The year before, I mean, really only like a little over two years ago, I did my first puppet show. It was called Scarcity Freezer, and I made it in response uh, to a conversation I had with my mother on the night of the election where Trump got elected. I think as a way of like coping with the political climate and just didn't know how to tell what was this very visual story um, without making puppets. Uh, in the middle of that, uh, my drag mother, Sweetie, uh, passed away of a very long battle with cancer. Mm -hmm. And she really wasn't supposed to be part of the show, but I just like needed her to be. Uh, and also just like felt really good when you're coping with grief to make something. The last time I saw Sweetie perform on stage uh, prior to her passing, uh, she told this wild story um, about this like fat fairy with um, thick ankles and strappy sandals that had these big labia wings. And then she went on to lip sync Carol Lipnick cover of a Harry Nielsen song from uh, the movie The Point, which is the song that's in the beginning of Wild Unwanted. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so that's kind of how some of the imagery came into the Wild Unwanted, really. And to me, Sweetie's story is all over the Wild Unwanted. I think mm -hmm. people think it's my story as also like, you know, for all intents and purposes, a fat sissy boy. But it really is um, Sweetie's story and um, the imagination involved in queer resilience. When you're communicated to that, like, your body is horrible and not worthy and uh you know you really communicated to that you really communicated that on like every level every day right mm -hmm. and you've absorbed it your whole life right and what kind of magic imagination is it that i get up and i get dressed how i like and i go into the world and i participate so magical right like that's where fat imagination lies mm. the future of the wild and wanted is bright i hope <laughs> that's the plan glenn and his collaborators are continuing to work on the show there are a number of additional characters and each of them represents this theme of being unwanted and they'll start fundraising soon which is super exciting because then more people can see it I always say to people that they have, and I had no ideas, like, just no idea how long it takes to make a puppet. I think when I look back on these past couple years of my life, like, that time, like, making, you know, puppets at three in the morning is like, you know, it's not what we might call work-life balance, but it was certainly, like, so magical. As for now, Glenn is touring with Taylor Max Holiday Sauce in San Francisco and L.A., and they're doing one New York City show at Town Hall on December 11th, which is a Tuesday. Glenn will be playing Sexual Consent Santa, and it just looks so hilarious and amazing. Follow Glenn at Instagram, at Glenn Marla, and their website, glennmarla.com. That's Glenn with two N's. Thanks for watching this video, and if you like it, you should share it, because I was like, yeah.